Welcome to Digital Asset News, take a top stories in crypto and bring out a bite-sized piece. Today, just as the thumbnail suggests, there is a upgrade coming forth with Ethereum 2.0. It's going to happen tomorrow. And we're going to take a look at what that entails and why it's a pretty big deal for validators. But it is just one step in the ever-expanding steps of getting to Ethereum 2.0. I'm also going to take a look at uh, a major bank is urging Ireland to uh, increase or up their uh, crypto regulation and what they want to do there, as opposed to what's going on in the EU. And uh, finally, we'll take a look at a trillion asset manager is getting ready to start trading cryptocurrencies as if the news just couldn't get any better. So we'll do all those things, but first take a look at what's going on in the market. So today, Another pretty good day, I'll be honest with you. Uh, it's uh, Tuesday, beautiful day here in Puerto Rico, and we've got uh, 2.6 trillion uh, for the total market cap, somewhere around there, 2.63, 2.68, depending on where you look at. But the Bitcoin price hasn't really budged. It's been around 62.5, 62.1, somewhere around there. And it's going pretty good, in all honesty. October is looking like that rebound case. I expect, again, fireworks November, December. And we'll also take a look at, uh, real quick, just as far as like what we're doing as far as like uh, the last 24 hours. And there's been some pretty big gainers, I'll be honest with you. Uh, Ethereum, well, not in, the, not in the top 10 or so, something like that. But again, Shiba Inu leading the charge at 15%. Terra, 9%, 6% for Avalanche, 12% for Polygon. 15% for Cosmos. I mean, if you're making uh, some pretty big gains, they are outside the top 10, but it always goes in this fashion. Things flow into Bitcoin, then they flow into some more of the altcoins down below the top 10, even top 20, and then top 50, and then top 100. And then as things get rocky, they go right back into Bitcoin. And it's just a cycle that repeats over and over again. Also, we're using Trade the Chain for sentiment analysis. So if we want to take a look at uh, the trader side of us, we'll take a look at the projected range. And uh, with 90% uh, assurance, we're looking at uh, in the next hour between uh, 5% to 2% for, wow, take a look at Bitcoin Cash. Maybe that's going to be a big pumper. Go Chain, Sora, I don't know what that is. Golem, Algorand, I can see that. Engine Coin and Revein in the Sandbox. So something definitely to take a look at. Also, if we want to take a look at uh, what's going on in the market as far as uh, the price action, here we have the four-hour candles. And just so you know, let me put this in so we actually see everything that I want to see. Uh, as far as the RSI, we're right in the middle. And it seemed like a couple of days ago, uh, throughout the weekend, anytime it would actually flow down to around 60,000, it just got picked right back up by the bulls. And it seemed like they would not let it go to that 59 spot. And then, of course, it rises up. We can see that everything's in the Bollinger Band range, the MACD's uh, divergent convergence. Of course, it crossed over here. And now we're getting ready to cross over again. But I think the floor is around 61.5, 61.2, somewhere around there, even 61.9, you take a look at here. So I see us trading a little bit sideways until some more action comes in. Where is the money going to come from? We'll get into that in a second. And then lastly, uh, before we take off to the top stories, the um, this is the ETF, the BITO for ProShares. And again, just trading sideways, not much action, but keeping it where it's reasonable, not taking huge dips to people who are like, ah, oh, ETF is a failure, just awful, which I don't really think it's that big of a deal. Anyhow, I mean, it's a good, it's a great thing that I actually got approved. Don't get me wrong. But as far as like where to invest, I would not be invest in, investing into an ETF futures for Bitcoin. I'd rather hold it myself. And then uh, lastly, uh, as far as the uh, Valkyrie uh, ETF, that one's doing pretty well too. Uh, trading sideways, a little bit of peaks and valleys. So normal day. SEC approved Bitcoin ETFs doing just fine. No massive manipulation. Now, Gary, it's time for you to approve the spot ETF. All right. So that's what's going on in the market. Uh, let's get to uh, today's, well, top story for me. Uh, real quick, I made a little uh, error, a little mess up as far as unstoppable domains. Yesterday, I was talking about that unstoppable domains was going to have their dot wallet. Um, you were able to buy, instead of like having a dot .crypto, dot .zill, dot .coin, now you can have like a dot .wallet. So instead of having that big long um, hash for your for your um, uh, cryptocurrency address, you could just say, just send it to rob.wallet and there'll be, and you can send whatever most cryptos that you can send to it. And I said it was actually went live yesterday. Sorry, it went live this morning. There was, which I'm glad I actually did tell you yesterday because there was so much volume that it actually crashed the website. But the website is up. And just so you know, if you want to get into that, link's in the description. So instead of having somebody go, hey, what's your address? Oh, it's 0x, blah, 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 blah. Uh, and having them email to you, say, what's your address? It's ericjohnson.wallet or whatever, or joeblow.wallet. And that's it. So that's what you got. 
Anyhow, so sorry about that little uh, foobar, or little air. So let's get into the big news, ETH 2.0. So real quick, um, this is an ongoing process. And um, just like we, we you, you saw in the, in the uh, title and the thumbnail, this is big news. I think it's big, but it's not like the end all be all. This is a long process for Ethereum. I, for one, I know people say, ah, Rob, you're just a big shill for Cardano. That's true. But uh, on top of that, I'm also a big shill for Ethereum too, because on this channel, I'm pretty biased. And everything I talk about is exactly what I own. So I own a lot of Ethereum. Actually, one, two, and three in my portfolio, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Cardano. So uh, it's not like I don't like Ethereum. I just think it's got its air, its uh, its problems, and you know everything's got its problems. I think they'll fix it at some point, but the question is when. Well, here is a step in the right direction. So what do we have here? So Altair upgrade set to activate on Ethereum mainnet. They say this month, but actually it is tomorrow. This is an old article, October fifth. But uh, the upgrade represents a low stakes warm up to prepare for the Beacon Chain. We'll get to that in a second developers and client teams for the coming merge. We'll go over all that stuff. So this is what's happening. The upgrade represents low stakes to prepare beacon chain developers and client teams for the coming merge when Ethereum will transition from proof of work to proof of stake. Everybody's waiting for this, but in all honesty, the Ethereum foundation really has to, it's like changing the engine while you're going down the highway. Kind of tough to do because everything's in full motion and that's what exactly what's going on. It will provide the beacon chain uh, with an increase, uh, just one part, in slashing severity and cleanups to validator rewards. So slashing severity, if you're a validator and you're not online long enough, they will they have these uh, slashing rewards. Or if you do some kind of like um, uh, unnecessary type of actions, then they can slash your rewards. It used to be 0 0.25, now it's gonna be 0 0.5 ETH. So it's a big misstep if you make any errors as far as validators. Anyone operating a beacon node or validator is required to update. Uh, validators who do not update won't be able to participate in the new consensus. And there's more information how to update node and validators is here. I am not a validator. I did not stake my Ethereum. It was beyond what I wanted to do. I didn't want to lock it up for that long, but people are making pretty good, uh, pretty good uh, money just, uh, you know, staking it. But there is that part. And then just so you know, this is what validators can expect after this upgrade, which is tomorrow, October 27th. So real quick, uh, ba, 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 ba. just so you know, that uh, this is amazing to me. The network participation rate is almost 100% for, for this part right now. Uh, totally staked, almost 16.3 billion worth. And ah, here we go. Currently, fully inactive validators lose roughly almost 12% of their staked Ethereum. After the upgrade, they'll lose about 15.4%. And again, just like I talked about, as far as like uh, the slashing for the network, the malicious behavior, such as double signing or double proposing blocks, we could find half an ETH. That's a lot of money uh, after the hard fork activation instead of just a quarter ETH, which is still a lot of money. I'll be honest with you as far as uh, uh, getting um, reprimanded for things that you do. So that is uh, essentially what is going on. So Voltaire, or oh, excuse me, Altair, not Voltaire, that's for Cardano. Altair is the upgrade for Ethereum. And that is going to bring us into closer to the merge. What are they talking about? This is what they're talking about. So just so you know, these are the ETH2 upgrades. This is from ethereum.org. I will link this in the description so you can see it. So the beacon chain is already there. Uh, that's already live. Uh, the first ETH edition of the ecosystem, beacon chair brings staking the Ethereum, the groundwork for future upgrades and according to the new system. The merge. And I want you to notice that the timeline here, estimate 2022. So I know people are talking about like, it's right around the corner, it's gonna happen those people are incorrect. It's gonna take a long time. And uh, it could be Q1, Q2 of 2022. And then of course, for the next one, shard chains, uh, that could be at the very end. So the main net, Ethereum will need to merge with the beacon chain at some point. Cause right now you got proof of work and proof of stake, they need to bring them together. This will enable staking for the entire network and single the end of energy intensive mining. Then when we get to the shard chains, it'll expand Ethereum's capacity to process transactions through our data. Shard themselves will gain more features over time, rolled out in multiple phases. So crypto, I know some people look at crypto and they go, this is just, you know, big, huge, get rich type scheme. And it's not, it's really, it's the longest play. It's a long play in a very short time. I hope that makes sense. Because if you actually take a look at like traditional markets, that's a really long play for, for some, for some corporations and businesses. But for cryptocurrencies, the 
the projects that have a lot of staying power and lasting power, they have a roadmap that goes out years into the future. And they're doing a lot of great things. They're trying to bring things together. We're just in, I know people say we're in the third inning and fourth inning. In all honesty, I think we're still in the first or second. I mean, there's so many things that need to be done and haven't been done. So that's what's going on with Ethereum 2.0. Let me know what you think in the comments section. Let's move on to our next piece. And these will go fast. Major bank urges Ireland to, uh, to get going. Uh, as far as uh, cryptocurrency. So BNY Mellon urges Ireland to adopt crypto rules before the EU regulations. This is what we got going on. So reps of, first of all, who's BNY Mellon? Uh, BNY Mellon, we actually talked about this a couple months ago. BNY Mellon to offer Bitcoin services. And BNY Mellon is one of the oldest banks in the United States. I think in the, actually in the world, correct me in the comments. The Bank of New York Mellon, nation's oldest bank. Ah, oh, there we go, nation's oldest bank said Thursday will begin financing Bitcoin and other digital currencies. It will eventually allow digital currencies to pass through the same financial network it currently uses for more traditional holdings like U.S. Treasury bonds and equities. Interesting, just like all the other smart banks that are doing things. But who cares? This is why we care. It's because BNY Mellon has 2.3 trillion assets under management. That's why we care. If these guys had like, we got a couple million on assets under management, I wouldn't be talking about them. Oldest bank, Old money, some may say smart money, but they got a lot of assets under management that could flow into our market. And that's why this is a big deal. But what they're trying to say here is like, look, Ireland, we need you to, to uh, step up and uh, actually put forth what you want to do with cryptocurrency and not leave it to the EU. If the EU comes in and does a blanket uh, regulation, it's not going to be good. So this is what BNY Mellon say. They go, look, while we recognize that the European Commission's crypto asset markets proposal aims to create a separate regime for assets, crypto assets at the European level, given the time frame for this legislation action to come into effect, the national regimes quickly begin to fill up the gap with their respective jurisdictions. And we believe Ireland should follow suit. So then BNY Mellon expects new regulations come into effect in 2023. And they, one of their examples is if you can either wait for EU or you can do what the Germans did, which is say, you know, we can do this. We can uh, bring forth as far as crypto and we'll make their own regulations for our country. EU, you can have a great suggestion, but this is what we're going to do. And then lastly, this was actually from Ireland. They said, given the accelerating change happening in other jurisdictions and to meet the changing needs of clients for digital assets, we would be happy to have a clear and comprehensive strategy to create an ecosystem of assets. And I think it's a good point to make that, first of all, it's kind of amazing to me that the banks are coming in and saying, you guys need to get regulation because you don't want to be like, you know, some other countries, I will remain nameless, that really can't get their act together. Get things done now until the union comes in and says, are you EU and says, do it this way. You're not going to like it. Get it going before they do it. And then lastly, I, I didn't mention this, this little sentence right here. And this is, I think, the biggest part the importance of securing a talent pool in the country's crypto and blockchain space. And this is what BNY Mellon told uh, the Irish uh, uh, legislature or the, the people in charge said, look, if you want to get this going, you have to first secure the talent because this is going to be such a big thing. And the talented people that are in blockchain that really know what's going on, they're all being snatched up by big companies and entities. So secure this net worth now because the most important thing you can get is the people that can bring you into the next stage. So let me know what you think about that in the comments section. And let's move on to our last piece, which is PIMCO. So PIMCO, uh, another trillion assets under management. And I'm not going to read the whole article because it's kind of boring, but it's, it's another, this is amazing to me. It's just another uh, <laughs> asset manager that says, we want to get into crypto which seems like this is like every day. This is actually five days old. I don't care about this part. What I care about is this last sentence right here. And actually this was from, where is this? PIMCO's chief investment officer, Daniel Iveson. Nailed it. It says here, and this is amazing that I actually admit this, but he's right. He says, you have to understand decentralized finance because it will be disruptive and it very well may disrupt our industry in our business in particular. So this is the first time I have ever heard uh, anybody in these type of institutions go, you know what, DeFi is a big thing and we need to get on board now before we get blockbustered. And um, I just thought it was a, a resounding 
happening that's going on in our market. So look, that's what's going on. There's nothing but good news out there. I'm pretty happy about uh, how things are progressing, but uh, let me know what you think in the comment section. But that is it. So if you stuck with me all the way in, first of all, thanks, I appreciate it. If you liked today's video, give it a thumbs up. Uh, consider subscribing. Things are gonna accelerate more quickly over the next two months. So try to get as much information as you possibly can. And that's it for today. So thanks so much. I appreciate it. See you in the next one.